Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Timothy Atik from Breakaway Ministries, and he just talked to us about stress. Where is your faith? A great sermon from Mark 4. Thanks. Such a good Thanks. message. Now, I was reading actually this week that studies show that we're the most anxious yeah. people in, yeah. uh, in history, <laughs> <laughs> that we don't handle so stress well. Yeah. And so your message is like, I know uh, the people nodding around me. And for me, um, as I listen to it, um, just how out of control we can feel and how mm -hmm. stress can weigh on you and just control all the parts of your life. So a very yeah. timely message. Um, we did have a couple questions right. come around, so I'm just going to jump right in to them. Cool. Uh, the first question is this, the disciples had been told many parables and witnessed many miracles. Why are they still shocked that he can control the wind? Yeah, I mean, I think that I, I, don't, I don't know why I can just say I'm thankful that they were, mm -hmm. because I think that their lives are a perfect example of our lives. It's a perfect example of the nation of Israel, how God would show up and then the next day they were they were either doubting or complaining. And then when I look at my own life, man, God can come through. And then the very next day, I'm either doubting or stressing out. I think about when my son Noah went, had to unexpectedly go into the NICU when he was born for eight days. And God just showed up in a great way. And then the next week, I was stressed out or doubting. or, And it's like that is the rhythm of our lives is... If, if God just showed up once and that sustained us for the rest of our lives, we would all be perfect Christians. But we all live in this perpetual cycle of stressing out, even though God's shown up, doubting that God is good, even though he's given us a hundred million, he's given us a million gifts today that we don't even realize. And so... I just think that they were normal human beings Relatable. who <laughs> yes. I can look at and say, they get me. Mm -hmm. That's so good. So. That's so good. Um, and in this passage, Jesus calms a storm and he demonstrates his power. And so we know that God can calm the storm and meet us in the storm. But what about the times that he doesn't calm the storm for us? Yep. Um, when the sick one that we're, we're praying for, who we love, they pass away, or yeah. um, the outcome isn't what we would want it to be. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to someone who's in that situation? Yeah, I would just say, I get it. It, it makes sense why you'd ask that question. Um, you know, one of my favorite verses, probably my favorite verse when talking about just trials, is John 16, 33, where Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. And I love it because it. I think a lot of times we can get caught off guard when, when stuff really goes wrong in our lives and we want to look at God and say, why would you let this happen? But I think Jesus, who is God, is like, I, there's no clearer way I could have put it. I told you, in this world, you will have trouble. Not you might have trouble. You will have trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. And so what Jesus is really saying there is don't expect to have your best life now. Don't expect for everything in your life to be completely synced up and for everything to be as it should be. But as believers, we are those who have hope. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of tragedy, we are those who don't grieve as if we have no hope. We are those who grieve with hope because we know that Jesus has overcome the world and a day is coming where all of creation will will be synced up and it will be as, as God intended it to be. So my answer to that question is, yeah, we live in a broken and busted world. And it's easy for me to just say that as a blanket statement. But when dealing with someone's reality, that is a very tough statement for to just slough it off to being a broken and busted world. But God hasn't promised us that everything will be right now, but he has told us that a day is coming. Revelation 
21, there's no more tears, no more pain, no more death. The, the old is gone, the new has come. And so we're Christians not because we want Jesus to, to make our lives now perfect. We're Christians because that's the, that, that's the only answer if we want to, to experience the life that we truly want. It's only found in Jesus and that day is still yet to come in the future. So good. And I love how you brought it back to Peter at the mm -hmm. end and yeah. how we see him fumble and make these mistakes that we can relate yeah. to and then how God redeems him and how his yeah. faith grew and how you challenge us that maybe we're not we're not ready to face death yeah. asleep, maybe yeah, how Peter yeah. was, but to take that next yeah. step in growing that way. Yeah. So uh, yeah. thank you. It's such a timely message yeah. and we love having you yeah, here at Faith thanks Bridge. A lot. Yeah, thanks for joining us here and thanks for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.